Hi, this is Dr. Marvinetta Clay, and you are watching The Word on Digital Vegas. And the word for the week is our children. You know, back in the day when we were growing up, they you used to tell you uh, your children that each generation would get wiser but weaker. And as you grow up, you believe that that particular comment or that, that document or that saying is in the Bible. But if you actually study the Bible and look throughout the Bible of all the scriptures and chapters, that is nowhere in the Bible. But here's what it does say, that our children, they must obey their parents. They must obey their father and their mother. So what? So their days may be long. And what's going on in the world today is our children are getting weaker. Yes, they are wiser. And yes, they are much smarter. Some of the things that we did back in the day, um, when the children today are not doing that, where we used to play in the streets and play with our neighbors and play with our children or friends and things of that nature, children are not doing it. They're more into the internet or they're more into the um, the uh, gaming and all that stuff that has to do with what the world is presenting. The problem today is with our children, our children are weak and they're weak in the minds of being strong through trials and tribulations. Some of the things that we went through back in the day, our children would not know how to handle. Even some of us that are grown today, as our children get older, some of the children are not going to be able to handle it. And the reason why is because they're not being taught. They're not being um, putting the fear of God in them. Not even that. They're not even being respectful to the house of God. And so what we need to do today is to learn how to reinvent the real, the will, and how to retrain some of our children. Some of our children are being taught correctly. Some of our children are being uh, putting the fear of God in them, and they're learning about God and getting a better relationship. But there's a vast majority of our children that is lost, and they're not knowing which way to go. And and don't even care about knowing anything. What I mean by that is that they don't have a fear of anything. That's why we have a lot of shooting. That's why we have a lot of killing. That's why we have all these things that are going on in the world because it's so easily accessible. The Bible says, you know, as we are living in the last days, um, these are the, the, the end times. Yes, they are because mothers against mother, uh, mothers against daughter, father against son. Um, we have all of that. We have a lot of hatred that is in the world. We got a lot of things that are going on, but why not turn all this hatred and, and preach love the way God says? He says he has an everlasting love and his love is is everlasting. And not only that, it does not change. His love is today, yesterday, and forevermore. So if we are to live a godly life and we are to be saved and to follow Jesus, we are to exemplify that love. And we are to take out the hatred that is in the world. Now we also know that as the world continues to grow and continues to go, it's not going to get any better because that's what the Bible does say. But what can we do? We can pray, we can fast and we can also show the love of God to all the people, those that hate us, those that love us. We need to show. I mean, God said we must um, lift up our enemies because he said he'll make our enemies our footstool. Not only that, we have to pray for our enemies as well, even those that despitefully use us. So why not try and do better? Here's my message to you. Love your children and not allow your children to overtake and run you. And make sure that your children is being taught an everlasting truth. The truth is God. And there's nothing less than that. God is love, and that's what he wants us to be. And if you can exemplify that in your children from the moment that they are in, in your belly and when they are conceived, your child will grow to be a greater person. We need better leaders. We need stronger young people. We need examples. We have to have those things. All the people that paved the way, our ancestors, and all of those people, they are gone. We need other great leaders 
things to come up. And so right now, even in the Bible, if you're looking throughout the Bible, there are so many leaders. There are so many people that were in the Bible. They had problems. They had tribulations. They had issues. But God still used them. And the very one that we always talk about is David. And if you even look at Peter, who denied Christ three times. And even if you look at Judah, Judas. Judas was the one that denied Christ. He walked with Christ. He was with the 12 disciples. And yet he denied. He didn't deny him, but yet he turned on him. And so here's what we have to do. God uses whom he wants to use in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Because that's God. That's how his love is. But what we need to do is know how to love people when they're in their situation. And our children right now need us like never before. I have no children, but I love God. I feel like I'm a Sarah, Sarah, who was the mother to the nation, to all the children. So that's where I'm at. And I want to be able to implement the love of God and the love of Christ in our children because our future is our children. We are going to perish away eventually, one day or the other, but our children need some standards. They need some directions. They need everything that we can put in them that we got or even the more because the world now presents a different way of life. They present things that seems to be more easier to get and seems to be at their hand more easier than what it was when we grew up. Why not give them Christ? Why not give them God? Why not give them the word? Why not implement a, a more family oriented a culture that knows nothing but doing the best thing and doing the right thing? God said, I come that I, you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Why not do that? I wouldn't want to not uh, disobey my parents and not follow the rules of the house and not follow the directions that they give me and cut off my lifespan because that's where it starts at. Why not follow the directions of your parents? Why not follow the rules that they have? Because as you follow them, you are living the life that God has created for you. You only make the decision to cut your own time span off. You have your own free will. That's what God gives us, a free will to do what we want to do. He don't make us do anything. But here's the thing. No God for yourself and the relationship that you need to be able to follow him and to be directed by him. Not only that, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall and will direct your path. So the word is for us to make sure that we put good seed into the children so that the soil will be a, 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 a way of growing and not a thing of dying. Our children are being hurt. Our children are being killed. Our children are being ostracized. We have having bullying. And most of our young people are not living a life that they should be living, that God has called them to live. So why not just implement the love of Christ in them and give them a better way to move? If we are able to do these things, you will see our children making better decisions. You will see them being able to respect their parents, not only their parents, but other parents. These days, people have, our children have no respect, they have no fear, they have no anything. The reason why our children are dying and being killed the way they are is because it's too easy for them to do what they do, to have no remorse, to have no um, uh, feeling of what they've done, to have no emotional nothing. And so that means that they're dead on the inside and there's no life in them. God wants us to live. He wants you to live. He wants you to live more abundantly. He wants you to have the things that he has promised you to have. And not only have those, but to be able to share those with the world. You read the reason why we don't have them is because we stop our own growth. We stop our own blessings. And we stop the things that God has already promised us. You was promised many things before you even came into the world. And as you live in this world, you cut off things because of your own decision making. So let's change the way that we think. Let's change the way we do things. Let's change the very essence of our own emotions and the things that the enemy loves to play on. He loves playing on your heart. He loves playing on your mind. And if he has your mind, he has your heart. That means that he has you. So why don't we put the enemy up under our feet? 
and let him know who has the power. Because as long as you are attached to God, you're attached to Christ, you have power because you are his child. You are his, he, he's, he made you in his own image. And because he made you in his own image, you are somebody, you're a peculiar child. You are a royal priesthood. You must encourage yourself to live. You must encourage yourself to make better decisions and you must encourage yourself to do better by yourself and to others. Know that God has you in his hand. He will uphold you even if you fall. No matter how you do anything, know that you can come back to God. Just like the prodigal son, when he had everything and because he wanted to see what's on the other world, on outside of the world, and he didn't feel like he had what he had, didn't even know how blessed he was. But when he got to the other side, he saw the very thing where he thought his friends was his friends. He thought his comrades was his comrades. And he thought the grass was greener on the other side. It ain't always green on the other side. And it ain't always good either. So sometimes God has to get you into a place where you have to be open and God has to make you be able to make a better decision to come back to him. So the prodigal son had to do that. So why find yourself even in that place when everything is right there he said a cat on a thousand hills belongs to him silver and gold is his such as i have is to his so all you need to do is just grab a hold and be that what he has called you to be let's work on our lives let's work on our children and let's make a better place for our families because that's where it is we need our families to be stronger than ever and allow god to do what he has to do eyes have not seen Ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men what God has in store. If you want God to do what he has to do, then you got to show yourself approved to him. You got to show yourself strong to him. And you got to show yourself willing, not only willing, but humble. And to be able to know that God has you in his hand and he will bless you mightily. When he said that he will open up a window of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive, that that is what he means. So let's do it. Let's come together. Let's pray. Let's do what we have to do to be pleasing unto God. Not about man, not about this world, because you are in this world, but you're not of this world. So why not be a change uh, a player? Why not put life uh, uh, and change some things that is needed in this world? We need some more people to stand. We need people to be strong. And we need our young people to grow up and to know who they are and to know whose they are. God has you, and I love you. This is Dr. Marvinetta Clay, and this is your word for the week. I want you to be blessed and govern yourself according, and know that no matter what you do, all is well, and God has you in his hand.